Hi, I'm uh, Brandon Bowden, and this is the uh, debut of my video sports blog. And what I'm basically going to do is talk about uh, current sports stories and uh, shed some light on some of these things. So, um, uh, let's go. So, it's my debut, so I'm a little nervous. So, give it some time, I'll be better. It's going to be a weekly thing. I'm going to do this every week on different stories and different sports. And I'm from Canada, so I'm not going to do all those stories on Toronto Raptors, Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Maple Leafs, all that stuff. I'm going to stick basically on major sports like baseball, basketball, maybe some hockey and all that. But I don't want to be too uh, stereotypical Canadian on you, so I'm going to just stick with like major sports and just balance it out for you. So, okay, so our lead, so my lead story today is Elton Brand, how he's going to the uh, Philadelphia 76ers, even after Baron Davis has signed with the uh, Los Angeles Clippers. And the neat thing, the weird thing about this story is that Elton Brand, he was, he was offered the same amount to go to Los Angeles as he was the 76ers, and he chose to go there, and he, he chose to go to Philadelphia. So now, Los Angeles is basically in a situation where they have to find some way to get the numbers that Brand was getting, and he was getting basically, he was, I think it was like 20 and 10, 20 points, 20, 10 rebounds a game, something around there. And now they have to fill the void by finding another guy that can do all that. So, so I was looking, and I found a few unrestricted, I found a few restricted free agents actually who might be able to fill the void. Uh, there's guys like Emeka Okafor from the Charlotte Bobcats, who's a restricted free agent, so they have to get him to an offer sheet first, and all that. And because all most of the top unrestricted free agents are gone, basically they have to stick with restricted free agents and try to get offer sheets and all that. So there's a lot of guys in the restricted free agency pool now. You've got Josh Smith, James Posey, Andre Iguodala, uh, Emeka Okafor, like I just mentioned, and all that. And now, I don't know, like, for the set Clippers to be a decent team in a very strong Western Conference in the NBA, it's going to take a big guy. It's going to take a big man, because Baron Davis, Baron Davis, he's he's all right, but he's not going to be able to get the job done himself, because you look at all the back and all the uh, NBA champions, there's a lot of guys that are, like, there's pairs, and there's, like, two guys, and there's always a big man, it seems. You got, like, Tim Duncan, David Robinson for the Spurs a while back. You got Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, even though there wasn't really a big man there, but Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. But uh, you got like all these g all these teams like that, and now what are, where are the Clippers supposed to go from here? Like, I don't know. It they, it might they might need another year to get some cap room and get another to get a good big man in there. All right, our second st my second story. Uh, Rich Harden traded to the Chicago Cubs from the Oakland Oakland Athletics. Uh, Harden has been pretty decent this year. He's 5-1 and one this year. He's 35-18 and 18 career. He's got a 3.49 ERA and uh, 498 strikeouts well with the Oakland Athletics. He was traded, him and Chad Godin, who is another, who is in the bullpen right now for, who was in the bullpen prior to be trading to, to the uh, Chicago Cubs. Uh, they got right-handed pitcher Sean Gallagher. I think he's a relief man. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure though. In, infielder, um, Eric Patterson. Outfielder, Matt, oh. <laughs> infielder Matt Mer Merton, who is, th this two are basically going to stay in the minor leagues. And catcher jo Josh Donaldson from, uh, is a prospect, catching prospect from uh, Chicago that's going to Oakland now. So, I think this is actually going to work for the Cubs. I don't see it working that well for Oakland because they got a lot of prospects and it's like a gamble sort of thing, but... The Chicago Cubs have a proven right hand right right hander in Harden. He's five and one this year. He's had some shoulder problems, but yeah, I think he'll be all right. Uh, There's not. I, don't think, I think his shoulder problems are fine now. And Chad Godin, he's uh, I've watched him a few times. He's all right. He's he'll get you a few innings in, and then he'll get the job done, and you can get him out of there and put your closer in. He's a good setup man. Um, he's a good setup man for Houston Street, actually. It's not bad. Um, um, but this this uh, trade, I think Chicago has a chance to win the World Series. So I think just Rich Harden is just insurance, basically, because I think they could have won with with 
Zambrano and Ryan Dempster and Kerry Wood at the uh, closing posi closing pitcher position. So now basically it's we get to the trade deadline and we're gonna see if they just tinker their their thing I tinker with their team or anything because I think they're they're pretty solid with Pukadome and all that. So I, I'd like to see when they get Reed Johnson back because I like Reed Johnson a lot. So. But that's that, and uh, yesterday being uh, was a day where a lot of NBA trades were uh, finalized, including uh, one of the blockbusters, uh, Jermaine O'Neal going to the Raptors for TJ, well, it was actually Jermaine O'Neal and uh, Nathan Jawai, I think, for TJ Ford, uh, Jose, no, TJ Ford, Rasho Nesterovich, Roy Hibbert, and Macy Obasta. Now this trade, it, it it could work out for either team really because TJ Ford's a very speedy point guard. He'll get the ball down the court as fast and get it to get it to whoever's down there, or one of your wings. Um, because I watched the Raptors line, Grasho Nesterovich I think is a very effective big man. Uh, I remember watching him last year when Bosch was taken out of a game. Usually Nesterovich would come in, and I thought he was amazing like that. That was perfect, and. And uh, Maceo Bass, and he was basically a bench player. He didn't really come out much. But when he did come out, he was pretty effective. And I think he could probably, uh, he could probably help out the uh, Pacers if they give him some time. And Roy Hibbert, he's really slow, but when he gets the ball, he's effective. He's a big man, like Rashawn Osterovich, but he's a seven-footer. He's from uh, Georgetown. He was drafted uh, 17th overall by the Raptors, then traded to the Pacers. Uh, I think he's going to be effective. It's not, he's not there yet, but after a little bit of work, he'll be there, and I think he'll be pretty effective in the future. He's a, he's going to be a decent player. Maybe not an all-star, maybe an all-star, but maybe not an all-star or a Hall of Fame or anything, but he's going to be, he'll help, he'll help out your team in the future. All right, now, to finish off my uh, first uh, broadcast here, I'm going to make some predictions, some baseball predictions tonight. Uh, we got three games. We got New York Yankees. Yeah. I'm just looking over them right now. That's not right. Alright. Why would New York be playing Pittsburgh? Anyway, anyways. I didn't hear about that. But we got, um, uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Get that through your head. Uh, at Texas playing at 8.05 p.m. tonight. I got Texas in that game. I think Los Angeles was very good this year, but yeah, I'll, th I'll take Texas to steal one. Uh, you got the White Sox at Kansas City. Now, I got Chicago in this game because it's the Kansas City Royals. Even though they haven't proved this year, but they're still the Kansas City Royals. <laughs> and we got Florida at Los Angeles. I always take Florida. I like Omni Ramirez and uh, Dan Ugla and that Florida Marlins team. So, that's my... Uh, that's my broadcast for this week. I'll see you next week. Keep on rocking, guys. Keep on rocking.